Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is B. This is my romance corner and today I want to talk to you about some five-star historical romance. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't give a lot of things five stars. It's really hard for me to give a book five stars. I have to feel like I wouldn't have changed anything about the book. I have to feel like I was so emotionally invested in this book that I want to put as much distance between me and the book as as much as possible because I feel like if I do that, then when I revisit the book many moons later, I might have forgotten a few details and it'll be like I'm reading it for the first time all over again. Let me know if I, I'm not the only one who does that because that seems very specific. <laughs> but while I'm reading books sometimes, I uh, use this as my bookmark. I've made this. This is my rating system. And it's to keep me on track about what am I actually feeling about this book. But I feel like everyone knows when they're reading a five-star read, the cl like, I, cl I close my book if I'm feeling so intense about it that I love it so much. I, I'll, I'll, I'll close the book and I know that this book is a different experience than, than the books that I've been reading and I try to savor the book as much as possible. For something to be a five-star read to me, I need for there to be a great hero, a great heroine. I need to be emotionally invested in this book. And it has to have a worthwhile ending. I will hear nothing bad or negative about a book that I believe to be five star. It's just mm, nothing can touch it for me. The first one on my list is Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. Now this one, this one's so good. This is Tessa Dare for me at her finest. I have read several of Tessa Dare's books and this one to me was one of the ones that hit so good that I was like, this is five stars as I'm reading it. I haven't even finished it yet and I knew I was just gonna love it so much. This one is so cute. We have a reclusive hero, hardened hero. Our heroine is definitely stubborn and she has a an iron will. You have this rundown castle, you have a re this reclusive hero that's kind of raggedy, no one's heard from in a while, and our heroine shows up there, she believes the castle to be hers, to be, she, she believes that she inherited that castle. And so neither of them want to leave, he makes it incredibly uncomfortable for her the whole time, and she just sticks it out. At the end, he changes so much that the things that he does just seem like so out of place for that from that guy at the beginning they are so sweet so heartwarming that they you you get like good pains in your chest while you're reading it you should read this book i think te what tessa dare does really well is she adds these side characters that really brighten up the story what i thought was really cute about it was that the heroine's father was a famous author he used to write these fairy tales and these people that she ends up meeting are such huge fans of it like super fans and it was really fun to read a book that i was fanning out about and then there's these people in the book that are fanning out about this book series that's fictional because it's within the book that you're reading it was just so fun it was hilarious it was so much fun and our main heroine has uh, a pet ermine which <laughs> made me want a pet ermine five star read absolutely loved i would recommend it to anyone please pick it up the next one i have on the list is no earls allowed by shanna galen this book i was so emotionally invested in this book shanna galen did the darn thing for me i was so emotionally invested you have to be i mean there's these children these helpless little children in this book that our heroine desperately wants to save so our heroine absolutely does not want to do what her father wants her to do which is to be a person doing her due diligence as a person of the ton going to events and balls and fighting a suitor she wants none of that she just wants to take care of these orphan boys in this rundown orphanage 
barely holding on. Then you have this slumlord who comes in and tells her that he'd be more than happy to offer his services of um, protection, you know, with a nasty price. She wants none of that. And that's when our hero comes in. He was sent by our heroine's father to get her to see what she should be doing, to leave that orphanage behind and start focusing on the things that are supposed to matter. Needless to say, our hero does is not successful. What I really loved about this book was our hero, and she was really strong in a way that was really maternal. She had such a maternal instinct for these little boys, and she was going to do what she could for them with or without the help of her father or the hero. And if they, they did help, it was just gravy to her because she was going to do it. Um, come hell or high water, she was going to make it happen. When our hero comes in, it all just makes sense. He is unable to leave because of his own conscience. He wants to help the boys because he wants to help the boys. And he doesn't want to leave her because he doesn't want her to be unsafe. He wants to be there to protect them. How they all become a family is just the part that just oh it hurts your heart in a good way the hero and the heroine's work definitely comes with a lot of challenges first and foremost you have a house full of these little boys without parents they're orphans and they definitely need structure they definitely need someone to point them in the right direction to teach them what manners are and to teach them that it's okay to be children still too because some of the older ones believe that they have to make things happen for themselves that they have to be out for themselves and they have to become men so quickly that part was the heartbreaking part it definitely broke your heart to experience these moments with these little boys that believe that they had to become men because who else was going to take care of them by the end of the book, you're so happy for everyone. You're happy for these little boys who didn't have anyone. You're definitely happy for the heroine because all of her stubbornness and goodwill paid off. You're happy for the hero because he didn't expect to get anything out of this and he found a home. That's why you should read this book. This book will definitely pull at your heartstrings. It'll make you laugh and it might make you cry. <laughs> And my last one on the list might not surprise anyone who's been reading historical romances for any length of time. The Duke and the Lady in Red by Lorraine Heath. This book was probably the most emotional. It might be tied for most emotional with the last one. So in true Lorraine Heath fashion, in this book, our heroine has a secret. She has a secret that you don't figure out what it is for a long time. And when you do... Oh god, it's so heartbreaking. That's the part that everyone that's ever read this book just breaks down and cries. I know that I did. Our heroine's in a bind. She has been swindling men f because of the secret for a while. They move around. Once she swindled someone, gotten what she needs out of them, they move on and she swindles the next person until she meets our hero. Our hero is no fool, and he figures out pretty quickly what she's about, and he makes her a deal that it, he'll give her the money that she needs as long as she stays with him for a week. And a condition to this deal that they have, she's allowed to go home without any questions about why from the Duke, and once we all figure out what that thing is about, it's so intense, so sad, it's so heartbreaking, and you understand. I easily forgave her for why she was doing what she was doing. Our hero does too, and I don't know if I've seen a bigger turnaround for a hero so far. The Duke in the beginning of the book is not very likable. He, I think his friends even barely tolerate him. He has a almost non-existent relationship with his mother, who's a sweetheart, by the way, all based off of a misunderstanding. He wants nothing to do with building emotional attachments to things or people, but once he finds out the secret that our heroine's been harboring, he starts to slowly melt away into this caring, beautiful, generous 
person that makes the whole book worthwhile. Plug your ears if you don't want to hear any subtle spoilers, but after um, the things that the hero does for the person that our hero and cares about, oh my goodness, it was so cute. He went above and beyond. The fact that his his money meant nothing to him, he was throwing it around so that this person could have a good time with no worries to just be free in the moment it was so cute it was just so heartwarming and those letters that that character would write to our heroine broke my heart i don't know about you if you've read it before but that's when i started crying i recommend this book for anyone who wants to read a book that's absolutely probably gonna break them (laughs) it's gonna break you but it's gonna feel worth it in the end because it was so rewarding to go on that journey with our hero and the heroine to see them come so far. They were both very different people at the beginning of the book and at the end of the book you just feel like uh, it was a warm hug at the end. It was so cute. It was so good. It was so breathtaking. And those are my five star historical romance reads. If you agree with my list, if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned, let me know in the comments. If I've given you something to put on your TBR, that's awesome. If I didn't mention something that you believe definitely belongs on this list based off of what I've mentioned, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about it. If I haven't read a book that you're recommending to me down in the comments, I will give it a heart if I haven't read it and you best believe I am gonna be reading it now. (laughs) Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for stopping by. My name's B. This is my romance corner. You're welcome back anytime. I'll see you next time. Bye.